What's up, y'all? It's Jesse Warden. Uh, a lot of you have been asking questions and asking me to do specific videos and specific gaming topics, some for JavaScript, some for coding, some for apps, but a lot of gaming topics. So I'm going to show some of the uh, actual building of levels and how I do it in Box TV. I'm not going to really cover the curves, but it's just a quick workflow of how do you go about building you know, this kind of level where you have the geometry and everything listed out, okay? So Zombie Stick 2 shows an example of it, but I want to show you the uh, Thuldane and Maestro workflow that I did. If you're not familiar, Thuldane and Maestro is really where you're just a sphere, you're moving around, and you're trying to get certain places. You're a dwarf who's actually piling it. You get out, and the goal is to get treasure from uh, a really hostile plane, right? So you have to stay in the sphere for um, to protect you from the magic that will turn you to stone. But the sphere is really big, so you have to get out sometimes, climb, climb ladders, go to certain places to actually get these treasure chests and bring them back to the sphere so you get the treasure, right? Really simple box 2D based game, okay? So the port of the Dana Maestro is you can drive the sphere via musical notes, right? So you click these, he'll drive right. Sorry, I forget the songs actually. Dini, right, we'll go right. And he stopped at this little cliff thing, so I get out. Make him walk along with this little character. He can actually jump as well. So I'm walking down. And you notice I have parallax as well as certain things in the foreground as well as the background, right? So there's very various levels, layers to this particular level, okay? Put the chest. Cast your magic uh, tin, if you're familiar with tensors floating disc. Some of you might be old enough to remember that. Get it, uh, get your treasure, good to go. Then you have to go to the exit, right? So we go back. So that is level one, right? So how do you create these levels? Well, we're going to turn on and show you each level is really just box 2D uh, geometry. So for curves, you're dealing with either particular angle of pieces of geometry or a variety of squares or rectangles put to create a curve or the illusion of a smooth curved sur surface, okay? So we'll show you what that looks like. So we'll go to the very top here. And I'll show you under the physics. We'll change it to uh, hybrid. So you can see the geometry as it happens. Okay. So the sphere, as you can see, is not a perfect sphere. But it hits this little angled section here of the box 2D. Right? The ladder, it doesn't because we have filter constraints. Right? So the ladder is actually a sensor. You can see the floor here is not actually round. It looks round because the terrain is kind of gives the illusion of a rough, you know, angle, right? So we'll get out. You see our little character here is just a square rectangle with a significantly reduced friction. You can go down and up, right? Down the hill. Go fast enough, he actually bounces. Make sense? And so that's really these green walls here, actually static pieces of box to geometry that define the level. And so you can, you know, touch the chest, you can actually jump on the chest, you can cheat by flying. It's actually a pretty cool little bug by doing this, right? Yay, goodbye! Bye! Right? Not supposed to be able to do that, but it's pretty fun. So, anyway, that is the, the piece of geometry. And you can see the, uh, the little chain that I created is actually geometry as well. But again, this all interacts with the level or not. You can choose which piece of box to be uh, features such as the sphere, such as the character, actually interact with the actual level or area, and which features don't. Now, you have really two two ways of creating this, this level. You can use a, the, the way of drawing it yourself. You basically lay out your level in code and manually position all the jobs. You can put that in like a little module called like a level one, level two. Or you can use a tool to actually build a lot of the geometry and development for you. And that's what I've chosen. All right, to just show you guys a step-by-step -step process of actually going through and creating a level from scratch, since I understand that that uh, high-level approach, we're going to take it from the reverse, build our level from scratch, actually drawing it. Then we're going to bring it in the physics editor and set up these geometry. Then we're going to bring it in the Corona and test it, see if it works in Box 2D. And then we'll just do a level wrapper if you want to put some extra things around it. Okay? So first, let's use our good old pen tool. Zoom in here a bit and make sure our fill is yellow. And we'll build a nice little side here, a little angled. Notice I make thick walls because box 2D uh, is a little bit better when the walls are thick. Okay, 
If they're thin, it's a little difficult for it to sometimes actually have objects go through walls. And we'll increase the stroke just a teensy bit here to help physics editor identify the corners, okay? So this is the left side. We'll make a little hill here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, we don't want to have more than eight, so I count it just to make sure. Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fill it. Make sure all groups. You don't have to. I just that's how I draw in Flash. All right. <clears throat> Copy it. Make a new document. Paste it. Go to export image. And we're gonna go to this uh, simple, simple level. Code. And we'll call this uh, level level one A, <clears throat> which is level one. And A is the first piece. B is the second piece. C is the third piece, etc. Okay. Save. Notice I am doing 24-bit with the alpha channel, so it'll make sure to actually do it. You don't have to worry about the rest of the stuff. Um, just want to make sure it matches the minimum image area, not the document size, because all we care about is this guy. Okay? Now keep in mind, you usually... One thing I know before I export, you usually define this as the pixels that you are targeting, not the pixels of the phone. So, for example, for iOS, you do something like, uh, what is it, 480 by 960 or something. You know, so you'd actually have some idea of what your level is going to look like and what it's going to scale to. For now, we're just playing around, okay? Export image level 1B. And finally, the third piece. Level 1C. Close. I don't need this flaw anymore. Well, we can save it just so you guys can play with it. Our SDK samples, the level, call it level one. <clears throat> okay, close that guy out. Now we will open physics editor and I will first save the file in the directory that I care about. Go. So level, level one, and we will add some sprites, which are the images that we just saved, which are I'm going to keep in the uh, code directory for now, so I don't have duplicates. Notice they have no polygons, so first things first, let's designate Corona as our exporter. Go. Okay. We'll do an auto detect. That looks good. Move it down just a little. Zoom in here a bit. Uh, that looks good. Okay. Let's try to make it a little flat here. I don't need that one. Oh, undo. What we'll do is right click delete that vertex. There we go. This looks good. Okay, we'll call this um, floor. It's called floor A. You know, let's just name the same thing as the object. Level one A. Call this um, my state identifier. Yeah, that's fine. Then we'll go detection eight. And we don't need. This one. So we'll get rid of that vertex. Move it over just a tad. Don't need that one. Don't need that one. That looks good. Call this low 1B to match it. And finally, for this guy, I'm going to do it manually just to show you the process. Draw, draw, add a vertex, Woo. 
add another vertex by double clicking on the edge. Okay, give it just a tad. Call this uh, level 1C. The all default to density of 2, which is completely fine. Save the file and publish. And it'll make a level 1, so we'll do the underscore thing. Just kidding. We'll do level 1. It should save it as level 1 Lua. Anytime we make a change now, we can just hit save, we can just hit publish, and it'll update the Lua file. Now we'll open Sublime Text. And let's close all these other guys. Open up the directory specifically to simple level code. There we go. And I will size it directly to this guy. And I will open Corona Terminal right below it so you can see. And navigate to my simple level directory where the main file is. Well, there is none, so let's make one. Let's um, save this at main.lua. Perfecto. And... There we go. Lots better. You can actually see the phone now, too. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So I'm gonna move this guy right here, since you don't need that much. Let's uh, move it a little bit. You don't need to see the whole phone. Go. Okay. So, borrowing from our other code, I'm gonna copy paste it so you understand line by line how we're gonna bring this level in. To confirm, our level Lua has all our P ping um, names and fixture IDs all right here. All the geometry is set up, ready to go. Anytime we ever want to change it, we just go back to physics editor, modify the vertex, hit say, uh, say, I'm um, sorry, publish, and it'll update this file. Okay. So I'm gonna open main, start copying and pasting code because copy cross the coding. We all love copy cross the coding. Everybody loves copy cross the coding. Simply fabulous, fabulous. Don't worry about all that. Don't worry about all that. Let's snag ourselves a. Uh, let's get a sphere here. Okay, we got a sphere. Let's make the sphere. Okay, so we got a sphere, and it goes. Ah! Peace out, sphere. All right, now let's grab our level code. And the way that works is we have to load the level data. So let's load the level data. In our case, we don't have some convoluted package path. It's just choir level one with the physics data at this particular ratio. Okay, so we've got the physics data. What do we do with it? Well, let's start making some floors. Okay, so there's two things that constitute a floor. First, we have to actually draw our images. So let's make a helper function. I'm going to borrow from the level creation and we will put a no need for a prefix because we already know where it is. Don't worry about the class type, that's confusing. Don't worry about the main group, that's also confusing. Okay, so we're going to add it as a static body. Notice we are we're going to map the name. So floor 1A will um, happen to go, or I'm sorry, level 1A will happen to be the same ping. And in our level data, it'll also have its data here. So that's why I named them the same as the image, right? It helps you debug your level a little bit easier. This is a simple modification of, you know, condition of the workflow. And uh, I'm going to center it, but don't worry about that right now. That's just the default to get it on the screen, okay? And don't worry about this. We don't care. Okay, now let's get our first floor ready to go. So we'll do level 1A. And don't really care about the stage. All right, let's make a stage, why not? Go. Global stage. 
Oops, not global stage. Sorry, get current stage. Now it's global. Cool. All right. Now our sphere. We have to actually have it interact. So let's make sure that this guy is not a sensor. It is a real piece of geometry. Voila, you have your sphere on the first part of your level. And he falls off. Whee! Next up, let's get our second floor. Now notice all the you know, geometry is already set up for you. If you don't like that, you can modify it in physics editor. And you're like, Jesse, what are you talking about? Well, the workflow is physics editor. All right, we're going to go to level 1A. Let's up this polygon so it, the hill is backwards, okay? It doesn't have to mask the image. All we care about is this thing right here, okay? So let's uh, make it up a bit. Save, just to be paranoid, and publish, okay? Notice Corona already refreshed. <gasps> Isn't that amazing? Now I'll shrink it a bit so you can see. Watch this. Move this up and hit publish. Corona is the shiz nanny. Tell me, man. It's where it's at. Like the Beck song. All right, so we got this. That's good. Let's add some more. Got B, got C, B, got C. Now they're all mashed on each other. Well, that's not good. Let's position them. Floor B, X equals floor A, X plus floor A's width. Remember, the reference point now is uh, top left, so we can use the full width. We don't have to do funky math, right? Now, normally in game objects, it's game objects. It's accepted that the center or registration point is the middle, but I'm a hardcore X Flash developer, so that's how I grew up. If you don't like it, it's all good. Uh, let's make his Y a little bit lower here. Let's just hard code it for now. Let's say floor A, Y plus, I don't know, 60. Oh, okay, that didn't work. How about uh, floor A's height? There we go. Minus 40. Is that 40? 60. Mm, 64. There we go. Let's decrease the Y about 10. There we go. Nice and touchy. All right. Don't have to be that touchy. I mean, I like you, but, you know. All right, floor. C is floor B, X plus floor B's width, minus 4. Ta-da! Okay. Now, this is where it gets difficult unless you have a camera set up, and Corona doesn't actually have a native camera API. So I like to create this thing called main group, and I tend to put all my physics objects in there. So we're going to create a main group like so. In group. Ta da! And we're gonna make every mofo go in there. Jesse, define mofo. Every object which is a corona display object. Now you know. Group. And same for the floor. Let's do it before we actually add to the flux. That way, it pre calculates it. Go. Now, not much has changed other than these are all now in a single group, and here's why I did that. We go main group x equals main group x minus 100. That's fear, you idiot. Floor. There we go. Now I can see where b is. See where b is over there? So let's do it by 200. Perfect. All right, now let's position. Floor C, sorry, yeah, floor C's Y equals floor B's Y plus floor B's height minus, I don't know, 60 <laughs> minus 100. How about just equals the same Y? How about that? Nope. How about minus 200? There we go. 190. Mm, let's go a little bit lower. How about 84? Nope, 86. Oh, God, so close. Good enough for government work. All right, cool. So we'll comment this guy out. So there's the ball, okay? 
and we'll add our drag and drop code to this guy. Give me a second. Again, this is why you have sample projects just lying around with good code. You can copy pasta in a simple context. I like copy pasta, Jenna. All right, we got our, our draggable sphere here. All right, drag them over here. Whee! See? And the cool thing is, is that, again, you can always go back to Physics Editor and change it if you don't like. Now, notice that our function here has ping. Well, if you have a naming convention of dash pretty, you can just simply replace those graphics and position those on top. Now, obviously, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship because of registration points, but you get where you know, you're going. So again, that is uh, basically the basics of making a level from using Flash as your design tool, in this case, taking those pings, loading up the physics editor, adding the vertexes on the various things, publishing the actual level file, adjusting it in Corona manually by positioning the level objects and floors where you want them to be. Again, they're all static, right? So they're not going to be affected by gravity, and they'll be wherever you want. The actual uh, gaming objects, in this case the metal sphere, who is dynamic, will be affected by them, right? Pretty cool, man. Let's move the main so you can see the whole thing. Timer, perform with delay. Delay is uh, 100 milliseconds. Function to closure because you know closures are uber readable, especially in um, lieu of all languages. I'm being sarcastic. Hey, I didn't ask you to do that, Sublime. Thanks, though. Main group x equals main group x plus I don't know one. Let's see two. End. Comma zero. Oh, wrong way. Let's do minus four. Boom. Let's do, I don't know, one. There you go. And that's your level. Yeah, let's bring him along so he can roll. Whee! Again, I hope this is helpful. And again, this code is on GitHub, so if you want to play with this yourself, you can. So again, my name is Jesse Warden. you got any questions, you can hit me up on my blog. You can hit me up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Below. You can uh, email me on Twitter, uh, comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. The questions are great, guys. Keep them coming. Um, I've got uh, 50 billion things to cover, some in more detail, some for the basics level. So some of the questions you ask actually end up being like three different videos. So it's, uh, it's really helpful. I appreciate it. And I uh, hope this is helpful.